Okay, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Hunter Fike. Uh, I've worked for the Bruner Brothers for 23 years. Uh, the way the setup is at the Bruners right now, I can speak to you. I can, apparently you can see me, but I can't see you. Uh, so if you have any questions, please type them in into the box and, and one of the several assistants here will, will relay them to me. I'm happy to answer any questions as they come up. Uh, before we get to the unboxing, just wanted to talk a little bit about the Bruner Brothers and our history. Uh, we were founded in 1939. We celebrated 80 years last year. We we're very proud and excited to be a part of the Philadelphia culture for that long. Uh, it's really the story of the American dream. Uh, two brothers from southern Italy, Dan and Joe Bruno, uh, came here really with the only goal of, of establishing a better future for their kids and their grandkids. Uh, and they might not have intended it to be so literally in the footsteps of continuing in the food industry, but that's what happened. Uh, after about 50 years of, of running the company, uh, one of their grandchildren, Bill, our president, and two grandnephews, the brothers, Bill and Emilio, uh, they said, we know you want to retire, but we can't bear to see this store fall to any other person. We don't want to see it become anything other than what it is. Uh, and we would like to work out a way to buy it from you, please. We, we'd be brokenhearted if anybody else started running this company. Uh, so apparently over several jugs of Chianti on Christmas Eve in 1989, uh, they worked out an arrangement where they would slowly pay them back over time. And, uh, and that, that's what they did. So January 1990, the three current owners, Bill, Bill, and Emilio, uh, took over. Emilio had a, a food degree from the restaurant school. Bill had a finance degree from Drexel. The other Bill had a, a business degree from Drexel. So they really had the perfect three uh, knowledge bases, I'll say, for, for establishing and running a food industry. Uh, and from that tiny 600 square foot store in the Italian market, we now have five retail stores, uh, a thriving internet uh, business, which is where the box came from, a uh, commissary, which during non-COVID times does a lot of events, uh, weddings especially, uh, and and uh, the Alimentari restaurant, I'm standing behind the bar of that right now, also closed for the moment for COVID, but hopefully open soon. Uh, we've built ourselves on the foundation that food brings people together, as was mentioned in the opening remarks. Nothing makes people feel more at home than some cheese and wine. That's, that's our stance. Uh, we're all about service. We welcome everybody in the community. Uh, a very philanthropic community as well. We always budget a lot of money towards giving. Uh, so I, I've worked here myself for 23 years, and, and I'm proud to call it my, my second home, really. Uh, I'm excited to do this unboxing for you all. This is the first time I've ever done anything like this before, and it's sort of the opposite of what I normally do. I've, I've probably boxed 500. I think this is the first time I've ever unboxed one. For some reason, no one's ever given me this as a gift before. Uh, so let's, uh, let's take a look at what it looks like. Uh, the ribbon pops right off. Uh, and inside, this is the, the perfect pairings box. We have uh, several uh, items, obviously, and there are, some of them are designed specifically to go with each other. Some of them are more versatile and work with just about everything. Uh, so I'm just going to get to it as I see them, uh, based on what's on top. Uh, the olive oil crostini, uh, that's this guy here, just a really basic but delicious olive oil infused cracker uh, from southern Italy, from Abruzzo, from Latvia. Uh, which is where the, the brothers were originally from. Uh, we work with a great producer there who makes these just for us and private labels and for us. Uh, Beamster Gouda, you've probably seen Beamster around. It's a pretty popular brand uh, from Holland. I've had the pleasure of visiting their facility in, in Holland. It's just outside of Amsterdam. And it's hard to describe, but it's almost like a thousand artisanal farms. Can, can I be heard? Same as Nike doing. Yes. Keep going. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, Beamster essentially is a, a thousand small organic farms all contributing their milk to one bigger cooperative who makes food of all different kinds. So even though it's a really big brand, everything they do is delicious. This is the 18-month-old Gouda, which is one of the older ones you'll see. Really nice and nutty, uh, caramelized, sweet flavors. Uh, our house cured uh, Soprasada, just a, a good everyday snack in the salami style. Uh, works with just about everything. Work through some of the raffia here. Uh, the smoked gouda and beer cheese bread. 
so a couple of years we were asked uh, just sort of as a fun project to identify a product that we think most defines the uh, And my answer was the Abruzzi cheese spread. Uh, if you haven't had it, I, I encourage you to come find it out. It's $5.99 for a dub this size and it works in just about everything. Snack on a straight or breakfast sandwiches, it works in many different applications. Um, we, in 19, the original owners, way back in the day, were making cheese spreads on the second floor of the Italian market store. Uh, and I'm fortunate enough to have worked here long enough that I actually included that in my responsibilities for the first five or so years that I was here. Uh, we had a, a mixer on the second floor, big enough for me to fit in, and five pound tubs of provolone and cheddar and, and asiago all in, in the walk-in up there, and spices, big, big room full of spices, and then the recipes from the original owners still handwritten and just taped on the wall like it was no big deal. And I would come in every Saturday and Sunday and uh, Emilia would say, Hunt, we need 40 pounds of provolone and Chianti, we need 30 pounds of pesto, whatever it might be, and I would go upstairs and make these spreads. Uh, and now I think they really define the company for us. They're sold in all 50 states, uh, in several national retailers nationwide, but it all started uh, on the second floor of our Italian market store. I visited our co-packer in Wisconsin last year, thinking I was going to see a mixing bowl as, as big as this room, uh, and it was actually the exact same size as the one I had been using 20 years before. Uh, and they just constantly crank it out over and over again, still done by hand, which was a, a really reassuring moment for me, seeing that our, our spreads were in such good hands. Uh, the smoke gouda and beer is our newest addition to the offering. We've, we've had this in the lineup for about two or three years now. Uh, sort of an aha moment we were in the boardroom tasting about 10 different styles and considering which ones we like the most and we had a smoked gouda spread and one of our other favorites was the beer and pimento spread and we said what if we just smash those together and, uh, and that's what we did and now this is one of our new more popular spreads the crostini by the way are designed specifically for the spreads they're small and durable and uh, shouldn't crack when you, when you dip into the cheese spreads give it give it like half an hour half from coming out of the refrigerator uh, all right, blood orange and grappa jam. Uh, this is designed specifically to pair with the, the cheddar that's in here. We'll see that soon. Uh, this works with pretty much any firmer, bolder style of cheese. Aged pecorino, aged provolone, aged cheddar. Uh, there's no actual alcohol in it. The grappa's kicked off, but you still get a little bit of that fruity kick. Uh, and obviously the blood orange too, that's in there. Black lava cashews. This would be another one of our hero bars. Uh, this really long and interesting story, I could go on for half an hour about it. Uh, if you want deeper information, go to our blog, uh, blog.debruno.com, and search for uh, Black Lava Cashews. And I'll, I, I've written an article about it there, but the long story short, uh, it was designed by a Venezuelan expat. She had moved from Venezuela to New York when she was five in like the 1950s, moved to Fifth Avenue. So unlike many immigrants, she actually came here with a lot of money. Uh, and went to Colombia, developed the recipe for the slow release uh, capsule that you see on just about every piece of medicine that you buy, every pill, uh, and sold it to Blacks Blackstone Smith Klein uh, back in like the 60s. Uh, and with all of this money that she had been born into and also earned on her own, uh, she moved to Philadelphia for love and established this, uh, this business, Roasting Nuts, because uh, she found synergies between the method for creating that slow release capsule and the sugar coating on these. Uh, and again, cutting a very long story very short, we actually bought the business last year when the oldest uh, remaining producers decided they were ready to retire. We had a little bit of a, a panic because we sell so many of these, we would have had to reforecast our entire year. Uh, and instead we decided we're gonna buy it, we're gonna keep making it the same way. And right now in the Frankfurt area of Philadelphia, there's a Roberto chef with a long wooden paddle working over open flames and a rotating copper cauldron producing black lava cashews. Uh, it's called black lava because that's the name of the salt uh, from Hawaii uh, and just that and the, the traditional uh, sugar coating. And it's, it's just perfect. If you haven't tasted it yet, go ahead and do it now. You're going to be wowed. Everybody is. That's one of our favorite products. Amazing, right? <laughs> Uh, are there any questions I should be answering so far? I don't know. Any questions, Noel? It's okay if not. I'll move forward. 
Uh, this little one ounce jar here uh, actually probably packs more flavor than anything else in the box. Uh, this is our white truffle infused honey. Uh, there is normally just like a tiny little flake of white truffle in each jar, and that's pretty much all you need to, to get this potent aroma and flavor. Uh, I remember the first time we brought white truffle honey into the store and I rolled my eyes like really another thing we're adding truffle flavor to. Uh, but this, this it really proves the point that truffle works with everything. Uh, I'm used to it in, in sort of neutral applications like pasta or potatoes or, or something like meat or seafood. Uh, but working it into a, a sweet application as well, this works on anything, cheese, uh, chicken, meat, fish. Uh, you can even put it on top of ice cream if you have any left over, and obviously if you're inclined to, you can just wake it right off the spoon. Uh, all right, we are getting towards the last of it here. Uh, piave, uh, another relatively popular cheese like, like the Beamster, but this is made in Northern Italy. Uh, it's sort of a, a kissing cousin of Parmigiano Reggiano, uh, but younger, a little fruitier, not quite as crunchy. Uh, it's, usually it's a couple dollars less than Reggiano, so if you want that nutty flavor for grating and don't spend as much for Reggiano, Piave is a great choice. Uh, but also just as a table cheese, this and the, the truffle honey together particularly are a delicious pair. And lastly, uh, the cheddar. Uh, the Black Bomber cheddar. Uh, Good classic three-year-old cheddar. Uh, probably one of the more overlooked products in the store. People, I, I think, unfortunately, think of, of cheddar as commodity these days. Uh, but again, bang for your buck, it, it's one of the best one of the best cheeses we sell. Uh, and a good pairing for the, uh, the Soprasad that, that we opened up earlier. If there are no questions, I guess I'll get to plating some things. Yes. Yes, there's a question or yes, get the plating. Great. Uh, so the easiest one to serve is the, the cheese spread. Uh, if you have long nails, you might consider using a knife to just pop that little handle open, and then from there it'll open up nice and easy. So if, you, if you're hungry and you're ready to get into it, start with that. Uh, open up the, the crackers as well. The crackers really do work with anything. And for fear of having to fly all over the room, I'll just do it right. One of the more common questions I get asked uh, from behind the counter is, how do you serve this? How do you cut it? Uh, I was raised in a household where that kind of thing didn't really matter. Uh, my mom thought so long as there was good food on the table and there was good company around, whatever happened happened and everything was fine. Uh, and I've always adopted that personality myself. Uh, there are probably better or worse ways to cut a piece of cheese like piave, and I'll show you two, uh, but really, it's a minuscule detail. Uh, from this piece here, the, the nose is already missing, uh, so I would I would say continue along that fashion and just go like that. And you can make some nice bite-sized pieces. Make sure, since this rind is not edible, that you cut the rind off. Uh, and you can even just leave the rind on the other side so you can pick it up with the rind and, and eat it like so. The other option uh, would be to cut off the rind of the whole piece. Everybody can see down here, yes? Cut off the rind of the whole piece and go like that and just leave some bigger pieces for people to pick up. What I would normally do if I'm throwing a party is do maybe four or five just to get it started so people see how it should continue. Uh, but not cut up the whole thing if I'm not sure whether or not it's going to be finished. Uh, if you have leftovers, you'd rather have it be in a piece like this that you can easily rewrap and that will last longer than if you have a bunch of, of little pieces. So there's the piave. Gouda next, the Beamster. Are you okay? I can see you fine, can you see me? Customers often ask what makes Gouda Gouda, uh, and it's normally a boring technical answer, but I'll explain it here. Uh, Gouda undergoes a process called washing the curd. 
uh, not to be confused with washed rind, which is what makes really funky aromatic cheeses like Limburger. Uh, washing the curd as the goudas are in the vat, or as the curds rather are in the vat, uh, before they're removed, the cheesemaker will actually dump cold water into the vat. And my initial reaction was, we we're just going to water it down that way. Scientifically, what actually happens is it sort of causes the curds to seize and expel more acidity out uh, of the curds. And before it can uh, rematerialize, they pull out the curds, leave that more acidic base in the vat. And because there's less acidity in the curds, it will last a lot longer. It takes a lot longer to deteriorate, which is why you'll oftentimes see Gouda's age for three or four years. And we've seen them as old as 10. Uh, so continuing just like the piave, cutting a few pieces like so. So here, that one for sure. That and the black lava cashews. That's one of our go-to pairings in the store. Uh, we have about ten different kinds of aged gouda at any given time, and they're all great, and they all work with black lava cashews because everything works with black lava cashews. Uh, we'll do the sobrasada next. Same deal. There's really no wrong way to do this. Uh, but just cut it into rings like so. will, uh, instead of just taking a crostini to dip into the cheese bread, so we usually do a crostini bolstered with a piece of the sopressata and scoop that into the cheese bread. That's his, that's his go-to move. We've all stolen that one. Uh, and then for the cheddar, same deal. I believe you should all have a puck of, of this cheddar, something with, with, with wax on it. Obviously, the wax is not edible. You cut that off. You might have a cryovac piece, but that too, obviously, don't eat the plastic. Uh, and same deal, you can just cut it into these pie shapes and go to town. If everybody's digging in, why don't you type uh, what you're liking most so far? six or seven pieces of cheese here. And I promise that will be enough. And then lastly, the blood orange and broccoli jam for the cheddar. And those are your parents. Any questions? We should sell it with a, with a straw. Yeah, you, you can use it to, to make a glaze. I, I would use it as you would use olive oil, uh, like a really good olive oil, instead of cooking with it, finishing the dish with it. Uh, so if you do like a, a roast meat or a, a roast uh, game of any kind, drizzling a little bit of that on right before you serve it is a really nice touch. Uh, and same thing with, um, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought there for a second. Uh, ice cream too. I think using truffle in dessert applications is a, a really fun surprise. Yeah. Yeah. Oil. Okay, oil. yeah. 
<laughs> most people have come to find that whatever they put truffle honey on becomes we, we are open and serving. Uh, we've actually been incredibly fortunate uh, with the COVID restrictions. We've been allowed to stay open. Uh, we have self-imposed uh, requirement of masks when on the sales floor, uh, and also a limit of 25 customers at a time at our Rittenhouse store, five at our Italian Market store. Uh, so we are, we are open and serving. There are uh, some small difficulties, but relative to others, we been very fortunate and have been able to, to stay open and, and serve our customers throughout this, this difficult time. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed everything. Thank you. Bye. Bye.